So we now understand, you know, what's the asynchronous model. We understand the definition of a protocol in the asynchronous model, and we understand the definition of the Byzantine agreement problem. So now we're in a position to finally state, again, what is perhaps the most famous impossibility result in all of distributed computing, uh, FLP impossibility. The FLP here are for the three researchers who proved it, Fisher, Lynch, and Patterson. So the theorem states that no matter how many nodes n you have, even if you have just one Byzantine node, that is, even if the parameter little f is equal to one, even then, no deterministic protocol for the Byzantine agreement problem satisfies the three goals that we want. The first property is termination, which remember just means that if you're an honest node, you just sort of follow the protocol, eventually you should halt. And when you halt, you have to halt with an output. The second property, agreement, remember this is our safety property. So this says no matter what, no matter who is Byzantine, no matter what people's private inputs are, it should never be the case the two honest nodes disagree. Okay, so at termination, all of the honest nodes should halt with exactly the same output. Validity, remember, says in the happy event that there's no initial disagreement amongst the honest nodes, if the honest nodes happen to all start with exactly the same private input, then that common input value should also be their common output value. And of course, we're only asserting this impossibility result in the very demanding asynchronous model. And it's of course important that we add, you know, the asynchronous model to the theorem statement, because actually um, this impossibility result does not hold in the synchronous model. Right, I mean, you know, in lecture two, in the synchronous model, assuming PKI, um, we gave the Dole strong protocol, which solves the Byzantine broadcast problem for any value of little f. So forget about f equals two, it could be f, you know, kind of as big as the number of nodes. And that was for Byzantine broadcast. Here we're talking about Byzantine agreement, but, and this is a good exercise for you, there's a pretty simple way to take Dole of Strong or any other Byzantine broadcast um, protocol as a subroutine and build from it a correct solution to Byzantine agreements, assuming that less than half are the nodes of Bi are Byzantine. Right, so that's a, that's a positive result that, you know, FLP tells us is impossible in the asynchronous model. You can't even tolerate f equals 1 in the asynchronous model. In the synchronous model with PKI, you can tolerate up to uh, almost half of the nodes being Byzantine. So that's with the PKI assumption. Now, public key infrastructure is actually not really going to matter uh, with respect to FLP and possibility. Um, but if you don't want to make the PKI assumption, it is still the case that in the synchronous model, you can solve Byzantine agreements uh, with a protocol that has these three properties that does tolerate some number of Byzantine nodes. In fact, the number of Byzantine nodes just has to be less than a third of the total number of nodes, right? So asynchronous, you can't even handle F equals one. Uh, synchronous without PKI, you can tolerate almost a third of the nodes being Byzantine. So just like in lectures two and three, uh, we learned about the power of the PKI assumption. We saw that there's stuff you can do with, the PK, with that trusted setup that you cannot do provably without it. So too is this result giving us a formal separation between what is possible in the synchronous model versus in the asynchronous model. Okay, so it's not just that the synchronous model assumption may be felt intuitively strong to us, it fundamentally changes the game. Okay, there's things you can do under that assumption that you cannot do without it. That's one of the things, things we learn from this FLP impossibility result. So two more comments uh, about the theorem. Comment number one is, believe it or not, I'm actually sort of underselling the traditional FLP impossibility result. I've stated it here, and I'm going to prove it for the case where you have up to one Byzantine node. But actually, this impossibility result holds even with the most benign imaginable type of non-honest node, which in some previous video, we called it a crash fault. So the only thing that needs to be possible is that some node runs honestly for some period of time and then someone pulls the plug on the machine and it just goes down and never participates in the protocol again. So even under the threat merely of one node, merely that's a crash fault, even then there is no deterministic Byzantine agreement protocol in the asynchronous model satisfying these three properties. So again, I'm not going to be proving this version. I'm going to be using a Byzantine node when I preview this impossibility result because it makes it a little bit simpler. Um, but honestly, it's really just kind of a pretty slight extension to the argument we're going to see to make it a crash fault instead of a Byzantine fault. So for those of you that are interested, I encourage you to think through how you would modify the following proof um, to get the stronger statement here. So second comment is, you know, perhaps it bothers you that um, this 
famous impossibility results for a, a notion of consensus which we hadn't studied previously. It's for Byzantine agreement rather than our previous two um, consensus problems, state machine replication and Byzantine broadcast. Uh, but rest assured, you know this is sort of the this is sort of the basic lower bound, the basic impossibility results that implies all the others. Uh, so from this theorem, you can deduce that there's no um, consensus protocol solving Byzantine broadcast, even with one faulty node in the asynchronous model, and there's no protocol solving state machine replication in the asynchronous model, even with one faulty node. That's a good, actually, homework exercise for you to do, which is, you know, think about if I handed you a solution to Byzantine broadcast, uh, use it to come up with a solution to Byzantine agreement. And if you think about it, that means if there's no solution to Byzantine agreement, well, you couldn't have the solution to Byzantine broadcast either, because from the latter, you could build the former. Similarly, think about how, you know, given a protocol uh, solving the state machine replication problem, satisfying both consistency and liveness, how could you sort of automatically build from that a protocol solving Byzantine agreement? And again, if the latter doesn't exist, that means the former uh, can't exist either. Now, never forget, when someone shows you an impossibility result like this, the point is not to discourage you from trying to solve the problem, from trying to come up with good consensus protocols. Rather, the goal is to make sure everybody's properly educated about what essential compromises are going to be required. So in light of this impossibility result, we have to change something if we want to have consensus protocols with provable guarantees. So one workaround, which one can explore, we probably won't have time for this, but there's a nice research literature on it. You can actually more or less escape the FLP impossibility theorem by using randomized protocols, where each of the nodes running the protocol can flip coins locally um, to decide before it decides which messages it wants to send out. So that's one solution, is to give protocols additional power in the hopes of overcoming this impossibility result. And then the other thing you can do is you can just strengthen the assumptions. Uh, and that's what we're going to do in earnest in lecture six, where we pull back a little bit from this extreme form of asynchrony and we work in what turns out to be a sweet spot, sweet spot model known as the partially synchronous model. Okay, so that's the statement of the FLP impossibility result, along with a couple of extensions uh, and just sort of how to interpret results like this uh, in the broader context. So with all that out of the way, all that remains is to actually show that this is true, which is not a priori obvious at all. So in the next video, we'll get started on the proof. I'll see you there.